Hey guys, thank you for checking out our video today. My name's Sean Elders, this is Pinnacle Combat Arts. Like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the bell so you can be notified every time we get a new video. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to train solo and the best strategies to become the best you can be. Let's get started. So I would say the most important thing is, is that when you practice by yourself, I've been doing martial arts now since 83, so you can do the math on that, which kind of shows my age. But martial arts is, it is a lifestyle, it's a dedication. And one of the things that I would say to you all is that we must dedicate and take time to train and practice at home. Going to class is great, okay? But you've got to set aside time alone at home to practice. No matter what style or system that you train in, okay, hopefully uh, uh, you set aside time. So the first aspect of, of training on your own and your solo training is create a time. Create a time that's yours. I always say make it a ritual. Make it so it's special for you. Why are you doing martial arts? That's the first question you have to ask yourself. If you're doing martial arts because you want to better yourself, because you have goals, okay? So create a time slot. Break that time slot up into, I would say, if you only have an hour, break it up into four parts. 15 minutes for each thing. Dedicate 15 minutes. If you have more, you, have, you can dedicate more time. Now, when we talk about time slots, it's important that, for instance, if you... Uh, uh, are a, for instance, a boxer, you would dedicate 15 minutes to footwork, 15 minutes to one tool, a jab or a cross or whatever the tool is. It could be a, a defensive tool like a slip, duck, bob, a weave, whatever that is, or footwork, okay? So one would be dedicate yourself to a tool. One is to dedicate yourself to footwork. Another one would be maybe a strategy, okay? And the last one would be to dedicate yourself to putting it all together, maybe shadow boxing, okay, and conditioning. So that's one part of it. Another part is, how do you practice by yourself? What are the different tools and mechanisms that you can use to practice by yourself? One of them could be mirror training. Looking in the mirror, looking at your body mechanics, how are you performing each movement? That's a very important part of it. Another one would be bag training, getting on the bag, learning your targeting systems, put a piece of tape or something on that bag and be able to hit, use that tool to hit that bag every single time. First in place, stagnant, moving around, and then eventually have a moving target that you can hit and get used to something moving around, which is hard, which can become more hard and more complicated as you go. So targeting systems is another one for bag training. Another aspect is, which is more uh, f a futuristic type of thing, um, if depending on how educated you are in into this, you could use audio. So you make a sound, record yourself on your phone doing an audio movement. So you might go say go and you try to, as soon as you hear it, you try to respond to it. Whatever exercise it could be, it could be footwork with, with a strike or whatever it is you can use audio to get a response. In other words, you're learning how to use your hearing to develop fast twitch muscles, to develop, maybe it's for footwork, you say forward, back, right, left, and you're using your footwork to do that. If it's a uh, guard, maybe you're working on grappling and you have a grappling dummy and you have three different things you wanna work on from the guard position. How do I do that? You call it out and you just go and you do it. Whatever it is, but you're using auditorial. The other one would be to record yourself with your phone. Record yourself with your phone, for instance, if you're throwing a jab or a cross and you're learning how to, to evade that attack and come back with a combination. Using a video and putting that video on your TV and the, 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 the attack is random and you just practice responding to your own attacks when you don't have a partner to work with. And so those are some of the things that you can do along with developing your conditioning. Shadow boxing is a very important one. Developing your, your ability to be able to uh, use your imagination to see an opponent coming at you and developing the fast twitch muscles to respond and developing your cardiovascular system 
to move around and use footwork and all those things play a very important role and when it comes to the striking game for instance okay and so uh, that's another one and then developing your cardiovascular system by doing calisthenics body weight exercises and things like that and then doing going and throwing in some resistance training to develop certain muscles depending on what type of martial art or maybe you do several different martial arts or mixed martial arts but developing and having resistance type of training to develop those muscles to be able to have the strength okay to, to perform those tasks quickly and with agile ability is very important uh, sprinting is very important I would say to develop your cardiovascular system and be able to be quick have agile movement and be able to be explosive with your movements so these are these are several things that you can do to do your solo training if you have any questions comment down below I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll see you next time go to our website pinnaclecombatarts.com there you can find out more about what I do and the classes that I provide Thank you guys so much for your support and have a great day.